Hola amigos, yo soy Halcilion and I don't actually habla español, so we'll just switch to English from now on and try not to speak any more made-up languages. Welcome to the 10th episode of Bandit's Ballads. Betcha didn't expect the Spanish introduction, did ya? Anyway, no long intro for today, so let's do a quick recap of the events that have transpired thus far throughout our campaign. The first eight episodes saw our beloved bandit, Balon Blacktide, rise through the ranks of the criminal underworld, from naked and starving scavenger to the leader of a fierce gang of ironborn reavers. But in episode 9 he took a break from the endless grind for money and power to engage in more academic pursuits. More specifically, he wanted to remember the proper raiding techniques that allowed his old clan to claim more loot from their raids because, you see, if you split the soldier's ribcage with a battle axe, the armor he was wearing is now nothing more than scrap metal, but if you go for the throat, you can then claim his slightly damaged armor for yourself. In a way, as his rogue skill increases, Balon can teach his men how to get better at murderizing their enemies without damaging their gear beyond repair. The higher the level, the bigger the pile of plunder, and that's not the only thing, because roguery is a pathway to many abilities, some considered to be unnatural. I can talk about this all day long, but talk is cheap, so as the bandit saying goes, THERE'S TALKING FOR RAIDING! The way I went about developing my skill was by breaking nobles out of jail, but that wasn't very efficient. Even so, I would have kept doing it, since to my knowledge, that was the only way, but my most recent caravan raid proved me wrong. I wasn't entirely certain if I really got those 26 skill points or if I was hallucinating, so for this chapter, I decided to attack a few more caravans and see how that would affect my skill development. Uh, that wasn't a quick recap, was it? Yeah, I have no intention of doing anything quickly today. I'll be taking my sweet time. Anyway, the previous chapter ended with me failing a prison break attempt and then getting thrown out of Marunath. Am I going to be sad about it? Am I going to cry and give up? Or am I just going to dust myself off and get back to work? Of course I'll choose the latter. My work, however, consists of robbing caravans. Luckily for me, just as I was departing the city's outskirts, my scouts noticed a hostile trade convoy, so obviously we had to see if raiding it can help me develop my skills more reliably. But chasing it outright is not the way to go, even though, theoretically, I could catch it in a forest. Nah, the traders were headed exactly where I needed them to go towards Seonon, so all I had to do was move aside and let them proceed towards their destination. So I gave the merchants a wide berth, and once they had enough courage to resume their course, I snuck up behind them. The convoy eventually arrived to Seonon, and while they were busy playing the market, I got closer to the city and positioned myself in a way that would make the traders panic, and flee the opposite way, towards the ambush point that you're already too familiar with. And what do you know, that's exactly what happened. Once I caught them, I've done what I always do. Got all the money by selling my plunder, and then prepared to rob the traders, or at the very least, do a double tap and get most of my loot back. When the attack began, I arranged my men in their standard formations, but this time, because my victims had a lot of mounted units, I positioned my troops in the area with the highest density of trees to make it harder for their horsemen to navigate. When they closed in, I noticed that these caravan guards were actually using crossbows. Well, 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 that's new. This is the first time I see others deploying such units on the battlefield. I don't know if you remember, but I was the first mounted crossbowman, and I'm pretty sure that the survivors of my raids, those that I captured and sold to the ransom brokers, spread stories around and now everybody's starting to use my tactics. Not like this'll make much difference, but it's interesting to see how my actions have shaped the continent. Anyway, me and my cavalry went after their riders, trying to protect our flanks, but while we were busy chasing them down, their other troops closed in and uh, promptly got themselves killed. I tried getting close to the action and even gave my rangers the order to cease shooting, hoping that the enemy bowmen would lose their morale and attempt to flee, but uh, nothing of the sort happened. 
Instead, I got knocked off my horse because I thought I had the situation under control and no longer focused on fighting. As soon as I fell, my men sprung into action and wiped out whatever was left of the enemy's force until none of them were left standing. I don't understand, I thought I had it figured out by the end of chapter 8. I thought I've finally optimized my raiding method, but it seems that the survivors of my prior raids have also spread rumors around, letting everyone know that if they fight the Ironborn, it's pointless to flee. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link, and if 49 of the caravan guards give their lives to protect the cargo, their sacrifice is in vain if the 50th just runs away like a scared chicken and gives in to my demands. I understand their logic, but it's still pissing me off. Looks like further optimization is in order, so that's going to be my secondary goal for this chapter, in addition to developing my roguery. Now, I took my sweet time talking about this raid and some people might criticize me for not just moving on to the next subject, but here's the thing. The reason I discussed it for so long is to teach my fellow bandits how to catch caravans, what challenges await when they do, and what rewards they can expect for their hard work. I know what rewards I expect for my hard work. You, pressing the like button. I'm just joking, you guys don't need me to remind you, you've already demonstrated amazing support throughout the chapters, but despite your best efforts, the gods of content do not seem to be very pleased and have turned their backs on our gang. Even so, we must keep marching until the very end. But I digress. So, speaking of rewards, the most valuable thing I've gained from this fight was the confirmation that attacking caravans does actually develop my rogue skill. Looks like raids are back on the menu, boys. If I knew that a simple raid gives me 17 levels in this skill, while a successful prison break only grants 14, well, I wouldn't have bothered making peace with any of these kingdoms. I still appreciate the money I took from those nobles, but now I can be a full-time raider and not have to engage in another stupid prison break ever again. At least not in order to develop my aptitudes. I might still rescue some nobles out of jail, but if I do it, it's to get respect with whoever I'm saving because if I ever form a kingdom, I'll need some like-minded individuals to help me take over the world. Yeah, I could do it solo, but everything's more fun when you do it with friends. Oh boy, digression after digression, I've said my piece, so let's get back to the action. Well, the action can wait until after we're done talking about the rewards from this raid. I'll try to make it quick. First of all, I got half my loot back, which is worth a minimum of 5,000 dinars, plus a lot of the trade goods that the merchants were planning to sell, which at first glance is worth another 5k, if sold into a town that actually needs them. Add that to the 10k we took by selling our loot, and then add the 3 grand that we took from the ransom broker for delivering the survivors to him, and we got a total of 23,000 dinars, if my calculations are correct. Of course, there is a small margin of error, but even so, if you conduct a proper raid, you can get about 20,000 dinars from every caravan that you encounter. More, if you manage to actually rob the traders. I didn't make it quick, did I? Well, I did warn you that I'll be taking my time. As I was leaving the town, I've spotted an Aserai caravan and in my experience, these are even more profitable, but as we were chasing it, we eventually arrived to the imperial village of Marathea and because I figured I could use more men, I nicely asked the locals to give me some recruits. As expected, the militia put up some resistance, nothing we couldn't handle, unfortunately I failed to realize that a battle would make my gang disorganized for a while and because of the movement penalty, the Aserai slipped away. This disorganized movement speed penalty that we're afflicted by at the end of every fight actually played a big part in many of the events of this chapter and many of the decisions I took. And if I tell you all the details about every close encounter that I had, we'd be here for 5 hours, so when the time comes I'll try to be as brief as possible. But even though we lost a potentially huge payday, at least I got 11 competent warriors to join the gang and replace those that we've lost when we fought Roland's retinue back in chapter 9. Gods, what a battle! Too bad the loot was a disappointment. But because this caravan escaped, I now had to flee to Batania and plan my next move, but since I'm in Sturgeon territory, I might as well persuade some of these lads to join the crew. After witnessing their battle prowess firsthand, I can say that these warriors are the closest I'll get to authentic Ironborn Reavers. 
Anyway, after I convinced the militia of Ismilkorg to lay down their arms, my men found six mountain bandits being held captive in the Elder's basement and since we're kind-hearted raiders, not only did we set them free but we've also accepted these lads into our family and together with the nine sturgeons we've conscripted, they've helped swell our ranks. But in order to rebuild my army, I needed more soldiers, so my next target was the village of Mazadan. However, when I got there, something made me reconsider. No, it wasn't a sudden urge to repent and change my ways, I actually noticed two Sturgeon nobles getting uncomfortably close to me, one to the south and another to the north. Since I couldn't afford to get disorganized, I left the villagers in peace and went after 4M who made a complete 180 as soon as he saw my gang approach. He did not get far since, you know, forest, but because another lord showed up out of nowhere, I had to run past 4M and leave him and his friends in the dust. It didn't take long for me to get back to Seonon with pursuers still hot on my trail. While I was in town, there was nothing they could do without declaring war on the entirety of Batania, so I decided to just wait them out in the local tavern, where I also ransomed my prisoners and recruited some mercenaries. After some time, Forem got bored of waiting for me, so he left, but Chastimir chose to remain, so it was somewhat safe for me to leave the city, and as I did, this lord went inside. Before he did, however, I noticed that his movements were a bit skittish and that gave me the impression that his party is weaker than mine, so naturally, I decided to turn the tables and stick around until he comes out so I can give him a spanking. When he did, my presumption was correct. He attempted to run away, but as the saying goes, too little, too late. Should have stayed out of my way when I wanted to attack for him, but he chose to be the hero and save the man who left him to die. When I eventually caught him, my scouts reported that almost half of his retinue is comprised of unarmored peasants, so without hesitation, I unleashed my dogs of war upon him. They were starving for a real battle. Because of the power imbalance, this fight would be short and sweet. When the hostilities began, I arranged my men into their standard formations, as if I'd do things any other way, but because the enemy was scared, it was up to us to make the approach. There's no need to hurry, we can just move slowly and steadily. Inch by inch, even the cavalry was ordered to form a shield wall to provide a bit of cover for my archers. But while we marched, my men were falling to the enemy's arrows, at least until my bowmen got in range and returned the favor. After a few of his men were filled, Chestimir gave his troops the order to advance towards us, and as soon as they got close to my infantry, I told my archers to move to the right side of the battlefield, and my horsemen went to the left in order to execute a pincer maneuver. As for myself, I decided to fight on foot, but by the time I dismounted, my infantry has already been given a dirt nap, so I was more or less on my own. Well, the rangers still had my back, and my cavalry intermittently charged into the enemy, but I was the sole footman left against the sea of sturgeons. Well, that's an exaggeration, because most of these lads split their attention between my rangers and cavalry, and soon enough, they were dying like flies. The shield boys were stubbornly blocking all of my strikes, but I held my ground, at least until I sustained a severe injury which forced me to go on the defensive. Without dragging this out any longer, I survived, but I couldn't have done this were it not for one of my riders who came to my rescue and turned an impossible 2v1 into a 1v1 that was easy to win. When the threat was cleared, I rushed forth to kill whoever was left, but my men were more efficient and in the span of 3 minutes, the battle was won. 31 of my warriors were unfortunately slain, but such is the life of a raider. High risk, high reward, live fast, die young. They knew what they were getting into, at least those who weren't forcefully conscripted, though I'm willing to bet that even they would prefer this kind of life instead of rotting away in their mother's basements. But you know what I fight for? Loot. I'll spare you the details, all you need to know is that I didn't obtain anything valuable after this battle, although my companions got an upgrade. I'm sure the plunder will fetch a decent chunk of money, but I really need a better suit of armor or a sharper weapon. But this fight wasn't entirely fruitless, because such victories help build your reputation and my clan was becoming more and more renowned, which in turn allows me to lead an even larger warband, if I found enough soldiers to fill my ranks. I'm not really taking good care of them and they're dropping like flies after every battle. 
When it was all said and done, I went back in town, ransomed Chastimir and his surviving men, recruited a couple more people and then went to the inn to give me and my men some time to rest and recover. But no matter how much we would rest, we'd never recover our fallen soldiers, so after a little while, I went on another recruiting spree. But in my path I encountered some Sturgeon serfs and because I've recently unlocked the Scarface perk, I decided to give this ability a test drive. I was hoping my scarred face would intimidate the peasants into relinquishing their possessions, but uh, it didn't. So I attacked them personally, broke their morale and allowed a few of them to escape. Maybe if they lack the numbers, they'll also lack the courage to stand up to me. Nope. Even after putting 16 of them into the ground, the remaining 8 refused to budge, so all I got from them was a bunch of scraps. The first trial run of my new ability was disappointing, but further testing is required before I jump to conclusions. After this I would continue to push into Sturgeon territory, attack their villages and conscript more men, but there were some complications. Obstacles that I couldn't remove on my own. Eventually, something pushed those obstacles out of my way and I was free to proceed, but it would have been better if that didn't happen and I stayed out of Sturgia, because the moment I set foot in these lands, every patrol that laid eyes upon me decided to give pursuit and I couldn't even attack one village due to the pressure of becoming disorganized. But not three seconds after leaving the village, I took the galaxy-brained decision to attack a group of three sea raiders because I believed that I could reorganize my gang and pick up the pace since I'm in a forest and that surprisingly happened and I escaped. But this filled me with an unfounded sense of confidence which made me attack another sea raider gang because I figured that the distance between me and the nearest homing missile was large enough to allow my escape. The risk I took was calculated, but man, am I bad at math. Just as I entered the forest, another lord came from the front and caught me, drawing the other two into battle. There was no chance of survival. This is how I died. Just kidding, I'm not going to throw my life away when I have other options to make my escape. Option number one was to pay the psychotic lady 85k and she'd let me go, but uh, no thanks. Option number two involved me begging to make peace with the Sturgeons and receiving a laughably small amount of money to cease the hostilities. This would be the most reasonable option, but I don't have the tendency to grovel for mercy. If I make peace, I'll do it on my own terms when the tribute is acceptable. This leaves me with option number three. Send some of my raiders to keep the enemy busy while I give them the slip. Well, there was also option number four. Fight an impossible battle and lose everything, but I think we can all agree that 27 soldiers are a far smaller sacrifice. To put salt in the wound, those soldiers were carrying a significant portion of my plunder, so I became a lot poorer than if I just stayed in Botania or accepted the 5k. But instead of being salty about it, I chose to learn a lesson from this failure. I'm way out of my depth, so I better stay away from Sturgia until I'm ready for war. For now, the best course of action was to return to Seonon and plot my next move. But in my path, there were opportunities for me to replenish my troops and I would not let them go to waste. I was still pursued by bloodthirsty Sturgeons, but this time, my calculations were correct and I got out of there in the nick of time. Eventually I reached my destination, ransomed my prisoners for 700 dinars and spent 10 times that amount on some mercenary cavalry. They are expensive, but right now, my priority was to rebuild my warband and continue on my path of destruction. But there was no time to waste. Even with my Sturgeon pursuers in tow, I did not even bother to sit in town and wait them out. I just left as fast as I could and proceeded to recruit more volunteers from the nearby villages. 100 troops should be enough for our military operations. Since the Aserai have the wealthiest traders, I needed to go south, but on my way there, more Northmen blocked my path, so I did my best to avoid them. I really wasn't looking for another fight with them, at least not now. 
A couple of days later, I finally reached the desert where I can't say I've done much except attacking three of their villages and forcefully recruiting some local talent. That's all I could do before the lords of this realm banded together and chased me out of their territory. The problem with the Aserai is that they suffer no movement penalty from the desert while I do. So there's no way I could outrun them as long as they have home court advantage. I barely managed to escape because I let all of my prisoners go free and released a couple of my warriors. In fact, I was so desperate for movement speed that instead of dismissing one of the recruits, I threw out one of my veteran archers. Whoops-a-daisy! The Aserai lords did not relent until I got to Ortizia and waited them out. It didn't take long for them to give up after that and when they returned to their homes, I also left the town and immediately laid eyes upon a Kuzeid caravan. Catching it was a pretty straightforward process. I kept running after them until they wandered into a forest that was split in two by a large river that they couldn't cross. Caught in a dead end like all the other caravans I've raided. You know the drill by now. I sold them my looted armor, got 10k and then set off to attack them at least twice to retrieve my property. You've already seen how the fight went, I showed it to you when I was doing my not-so-quick daily recap. As for the results of this battle, we didn't manage to leave any survivors, so we wouldn't retrieve more than 50% of my loot. Tisk tisk tisk. I did, however, obtain some armor that was slightly better than mine, some shoulder guards that I instantly equipped, and a helmet that unfortunately looked uglier than the one I was already wearing, so I gifted it to one of my followers. If I don't find something good soon, I might take it back, because protecting my noggin is more important than having drip. After this, I set course back south, where I'd occupy the choke point between the Nahasa and the west of Calradia as I wait for caravans to pass through. But on my way there, I ran into one of the assholes who chased me out of the desert and it was time for some payback. Is this fight worth talking about? Of course it is, in fact, it was one of my best battles ever. Just like all the other lords I've fought so far, the Yule stayed on the defensive, for the most part, with the sole exception being his Mamelukes, who took it upon themselves to harass us with arrows from horseback. To counter their hit-and-run tactics, I rushed towards them and ordered my cavalry to follow suit, planning to skewer as many of them as possible. In the meantime, my footmen would slowly approach the enemy's lines until I find them an advantageous position on the battlefield. I can't say my combat skills were very effective in this first bout, all I could do was slightly injure the horse archers, but my mere presence was enough to deter them from circling around my troops and send them running back to the rest of their army. But while I was giving chase, I noticed a small hill relatively close to the enemy and without even thinking about it, I recognized this as the advantageous position I was looking for. After ordering my men to move there, I resumed my pursuit for the enemy's Mamluks and sent one of them flying with the first javelin I threw. How he's still alive after that, I don't know, but while chasing them, I got too close to their archers and got an arrow to the knee which forced me to fall back and prepare my men for an encounter. While the footmen were lumbering along towards the hill, the cavalry formed a temporary shield wall to provide some cover for these boys. Before long, the Yule ordered his soldiers to advance towards us with the Mamelukes in the vanguard. I wanted to take them out of the picture, but while I charged towards them, one of these lads shot an arrow through my other knee and it was time for me to pull back and leave the fighting to my men while I give them orders from the back. That does not mean I'll leave all the glory to them, but I will not be putting my life on the line. For a while, the battle continued in this state, with the bulk of the enemy force slowly approaching us while their skirmishers tried to do some damage, but slowly grinding themselves down against our might. It took a bit of time until I realized that the entire battlefield is a hill, so naturally, I ordered my archers to occupy the high ground while the infantry would remain slightly below. As for my riders, they stampeded towards the enemy cavalry to prevent them from causing trouble for our archers and that marked the official beginning of the battle. Everything thus far was just the foreplay. But the clash of the shield walls was yet to commence and before it did, I sent my horsemen behind the enemy's line. When the time was right, everyone was ordered to charge forth, except for the archers who would pepper the enemy with arrows from an elevated position. 
With the orders now given, there was not much for me to do except ride around and stab people with my spear and this went pretty well, if I do say so myself. What followed for the next few minutes can easily be described with only a couple of words. Unrestrained violence. There was no reasoning, no planning, no deductions. Actually, I'm wrong about this last part. Plenty of Aserai lives were deducted by me and my men without a hint of mercy. And despite my plan to leave the fighting to my warriors, I did take a risk and put my spear to work with deadly efficiency. I'm not saying this was easy, for we fought a worthy foe. But because of my prior decisions in this battle, we were now at a clear advantage and did not need to rely upon any advanced tactics. Everyone was left to their own devices with only one order left to fulfill. Kill. And that order was religiously followed until my men's celebratory shouts announced our decisive victory. But as you know, I'm under obligation to declare my income after every successful battle. This is the loot, I'm sure it'll fetch some good money, but nothing special. I did get nearly 5k from ransoming the prisoners, thanks to my slave trader ability that I've unlocked not too long ago. But before I had my revenge on the Yule, I was headed somewhere, so it was time to continue. After I reached my destination, it didn't take long for an Aserai trade convoy to show up, so I did what I always do when I assault caravans. Catch, sell, attack. The only noteworthy thing that occurred in this battle was when I came really close to firing one of my own guys as I attempted to help one of the traders retire. My attempt was successful, but that was a really butt-clenching moment. Other than that, nothing interesting happened in this fight. Everyone attacked everyone until the enemy was completely and utterly crushed in the first attack. None of our victims managed to run away, so we couldn't squeeze more loot out of the caravan. It looks like all the optimization I've done in Chapter 8 was in vain and I can no longer rob caravans. But maybe that's because I attack all the enemies at once. Maybe a more systematic approach is in order. I have an idea, but I'm going to need to accost another trade convoy. But without even realizing it, I actually managed to accomplish the first goal I set for this chapter. My rogue reskill has increased to level 160, which allows me to pick between one of two abilities. The first one is using my reputation as a successful raider to more easily convince bandit gangs to join my organization. And the other ability is using my infamy to intimidate town merchants into paying me more money for the loot I'm selling. If I had to pick one and stick with it, I'd choose to have partners in crime, because how can this story be bandits' ballads if I don't make friends with the local outlaws? But because the arena master can help me re-specialize, I chose to invest in some smuggler connections this time to get even more money from my life of crime. Once I have about a million denars piled up, I'll go for the other ability. It would have been perfect to have both of these perks active at the same time, but this is good enough. But I have one more goal to accomplish for today. Committing a proper robbery. Again. Not too long ago, I've said that you cannot improve upon perfection and that statement remains true. But the situations changed and my ways are no longer perfect. So I caught another Aserai caravan, sold them stuff for money, then told them to return my belongings. They categorically refused, as they always do, so it was time to test my new idea out. Leave their archers alone until their cavalry is dealt with. So I allowed their mounted units to approach us and we held our positions, planning to cause as much damage as possible. Because their footmen were lagging behind, we actually managed to kill quite a few of their riders, but once their archers got in range, I sent everybody well away from the fighting. Their horsemen would obviously continue their pursuit and because my men had no one else to target, the mounted caravan guards were slowly getting chewed up and sped out. As they were on the verge of non-existence, their archers finally closed in, so I ordered my riders to charge into them and unleash their anger while at the same time, my rangers let loose a hail of arrows upon them. My job was to stick around and listen for people pissing their pants. 
It was very faint, but I eventually heard it, and when I did, I immediately sent all of my riders away and ordered my archers to cease fire. Sure enough, three of the armed traders lost their shit and started running for their lives while the rest of their force continued to fight. I chose to escort the cowards away from the battlefield, and when they were a safe distance away, the infantry and archers were told to resume the violence, and a few seconds later, our victory was declared, this time without completely wiping out the enemy. I was actually expecting these maneuvers to cause quite a few casualties for me, but surprisingly, only two of our men bit the dust, so all in all, this is one of the best raids I've ever conducted. The spoils of war were nothing special, just some gear from their fallen soldiers and half of their cargo, but we could get more, even if we can't rob them. But let's see what they think. They ran away to save themselves, but it would have been all for nothing if they refused to give in to my demands this time. They actually did. Surprisingly reasonable. As expected, I got the other half of their cargo, which means this wasn't just one of the best raids I've ever done, but the best. And just like that, my second goal for today has been achieved with this caravan allowing itself to get robbed. Of course, I allowed the traders to walk away after they gave me their stuff because I want reasonable people to trade with in the future. But there's still a matter of selling my plunder, so I made my way to Ortizia. However, in order to intimidate the local merchants to pay an acceptable price for my loot, I needed to commit a felony and since none of the local crime lords offer to sell any stolen goods, I needed to extort some peasants. And I tried to do it, again and again and again, but the peasants were adamant about fighting to protect their property and because a war with the Imperials would be counterproductive at this time, I just had to let them go. Damn, my scarred face is useless. Ortizia was a dead end, so I made my way to Lagetta instead and luckily for me, one of the local artisans had a problem I could solve. You see, this man would ply his honest trade from dawn till dusk and get the short end of the stick because he's forbidden by law from exporting his wares or selling them for a fair price and his hemorrhaging money. That's where I come in. We stage a robbery, I take his wares, transport them to another town and we both turn a profit. I did not particularly care to help this artisan, but our little theatrical act would send a message to the local merchants that I am not to be trifled with and so they would offer me a fair price for my loot. In fact, I got paid 47,000 dinars for all the armor and weapons I sold here, whereas in Ortizia I received a mere 31k for the same stuff. Looks like my smuggler connections are paying off. But I had a job to do, so I made my way to Marunath, Got paid and then I spotted another Asarai caravan with only 7 defenders, so I obviously gave chase to it. When I caught up, lo and behold it's my friends from the desert, the ones I just robbed. Since I know they have nothing to offer, I just let them go. In time they will get back on their feet, rebuild their enterprise, restock their wares and I'll take them again, but until then, I best leave them to their business. With all this done, it was time to wrap it up, but before I could do that, a Sturgeon Lord with 45 men wandered by and I wanted some revenge for the 27 men that I lost fighting his kingdom. But when I finally caught him, night fell over the land and I really hate fighting in the dark. So I let him go and continued chasing him until once more, night fell. Again and again. I eventually caught him during the day, three days later, and by this time, we've already entered Vlandian territory. I don't know why I insisted on fighting him during the day, because I didn't even join the battle, I just sent my men to kill his men, and I could have easily done that during the night, so I guess this was just a way for me to pointlessly extend this already overextended chapter. But I beat him with minimal casualties, took him and his surviving men prisoners, ransomed them all for 6k, spent 7k on mercenaries and then sold some of my trade goods for precisely 12 grand. And with 301,000 dinars in my bank account, I would say that now is a good time to bring this chapter to an end. Not before doing a quick recap of everything we've achieved today. First of all, I managed to develop my roguery skill to an acceptable level, which unlocked the option to get paid more money for the loot 
I'm selling, and I can switch this out with the ability to recruit bandits into my own gang whenever I please. And secondly, we've learned how to catch caravans and commit a proper robbery. I thought I had this one figured out two chapters ago, but apparently, more optimization was in order. And now that I've accomplished all of this, I have a clear path to becoming the most successful robber baron that Calradia has ever seen, but we'll leave that for the future. For now, we have to say farewell to each other. Thank you for watching, thanks for the support, and goodbye.